Hello guys, it's Will here, back with another NFL Prize Picks video. This time, going to be going over the Thursday NFL Thanksgiving slate. So, happy Thanksgiving to everyone if you do celebrate, and Prize Picks did give us a promo. Justin Jefferson, free square, over 0.5 receiving yards, $20 max on this. You can play it however you want, as long as it adds up to uh, 20 you can play it like 4 or $5 entries. So, if you already used it though, you can play these picks as is. They are some good ones, but do understand uh, on a Thursday slate where there are only three games, the options are going to be limited, and I want to focus in on just the Thursday games. So if you want the Sunday plays, those are all in the Discord. Join our uh, DFS Army membership. If you're new, you do get a free month of that if you uh, are, are totally new to prize picks. So that is the offer that we do have um, ongoing, and let's get right into this video. So. The first uh, play that we have, best play of the slate, uh, I give the edge to this one, and that is Jacoby Myers, four receptions, taking the over for him. And the reasoning for this pick is um, the they're taking on the Vikings, and the this game is going to be in Minnesota, New England. They are a run-first team. But they likely are going to have to throw because they're on the road. Vikings are a very good team. Didn't show it last week against Dallas. But I think this is definitely a bounce back game for the Vikings. And this is a 42.5 total. The Patriots are 2.5 underdogs. They're also the road team. So they should be trailing, which is going to be a force. The Patriots to throw the ball. Mac Jones is going to have to throw it. And he and Jacoby Myers, they do have a pretty good connection. That He's the number one receiver on this team. And they're basically feeding Myers and Ramondre Stevenson. Damon Jones is back, but he's not that much of a pass catcher. So it's really going to these two guys in the Vikings. Their defense is really beat up. Cam Dantzler, he's still on the IR. And then Caleb Evans, he is still in concussion protocol. So he might miss this game again. And then the guy who fills in, Andrew Booth, he is dealing with knee soreness now. So the Vikings defense is... Looking really hurt, and that's going to weaken this team a lot. Allow the Patriots to uh, probably move the ball easier than they would otherwise in uh, against a full-strength Vikings defense. So I think Myers, as a number one receiver here, he's a short intermediate guy, so easier for uh, to complete or for completions. So I think he's at least getting four game scripts fits right in. So I think he actually get five, but the odds actually are against that. But you know, we, I trust odds, but also there's certain matchups. I'm not going to strictly just look at odds. So it's something that I do use, but in terms of this prop at four, I think he's at least getting four. So I do really like this. And then the next prop, it is going to be another Patriot, Ramondre Stevenson. So you can't play these two together because they're teammates, but I would say you can you know, put like $10 on each of these with uh, the free square, Jefferson. Um, but for Stevenson, 26.5 receiving yards, taking the over. So looking at uh, the Vikings against running backs, um, let me pull this up against running backs here on the entire season. And then you look at targets. So I already looked it up. It's 14th. The Vikings allow the 14th um, most targets. And then in terms of the cons completions, they allow the 12th most. So a little bit uh, above the league average. So that's good to see. But it really is just about the Vikings. If they're going to be up, that's going to force the Patriots to throw. And Stevenson, he is... I'll take a look at a prize picks tool for um, Stevenson. 28.5 receiving yards. So you do get a two-yard discount. We are projecting him for 31.91. So that's something that's good. And then for Jacoby, Jacoby Myers... We have him at 4.93, so the over gives you a 4.4% edge. Nice little edge there. But again, Stevenson, his game, even with Damian Harris back, he's just increased his passing game usage. They're going to him a lot more. The routes that he's running also are designed really well to just give him completions to get him space and run after the catch. So uh, again, a positive game script and someone who is involved in the passing game that if they can't run the ball because they're trailing, they're going to be throwing it. And Stevenson, Myers, they're going to be the two go-to guys for the Patriots. 
And now, because this slate, there's only three games, these plays, the rest of these plays, they're not going to be probably usual plays that I would give. Like, if there were better plays, I probably for sure would be taking these off. But we have to work with what we got. And it's going to be Dalton Schultz under 10.5 fantasy score. Now, the worry, what worries me here is that the Giants, they're very good against wide receivers, but they're a little bit weak under or below league average against tight ends. But his receiving yard prop, as you can see for price weeks, they put him at 37.5. His book line is 36.5 and it's 3.5 receptions. So if you just do the math there, that is going to be 7.15. Uh, in terms of fantasy score, so he's a ways off of 10.5, and how he's going to get over that is going to be because he outperforms significantly either yards or gets a lot of catches, because his touchdown odds are at plus 260, and if you're really betting against the touchdown, obviously that's it's not uh, for sh for certain that if he doesn't catch a touchdown, he's going to go under, but when the touchdown odds are that high, or Rather, uh, the the odds of it happening are low. You want to take the under on these fantasy scores that just have a very large difference compared to what the projection is. So, at 10.5, it really is too high. It should probably be like 9. So, I think this is going to get bumped. We're still early, you know, over 24 hours before this game starts. So, there's a lot of room for these lines to adjust. So, I'm going to take the under on Dalton Schultz. In terms of how I rank this, this would be a tier 3 play with uh, Myers and Stevenson as tier 2s. And along the similar line of thinking, we have Gabe Davis, 12.5 and under as well. Same concerns. This is going to be a spot where the Bills should be able to put up a lot of points. But because they should be able to do that, you're basically avoiding or hoping that Gabe Davis is not the guy who catches a long touchdown in the first half. The uh, the Bills, maybe it's because they're trying to save Josh Allen's elbow because he's dealing with an injury, that they really ran the ball a ton last week. And remember, last week, they moved that game to Detroit. So the, it wasn't an outdoor game where the winds, the snow, or the rain were playing a factor, where they had to run the ball. They were indoors, and if they're not willing to throw the ball as much as they used to even when they're up that's definitely going to be a negative for these receivers and Gabe Davis he's a receiver so it's a much uh, likely chance in terms of to catch a long bomb that's the player that he is and also for a touchdown compared to Dalton Schultz Gabe Davis his touchdown odds are a plus 165 so not uh, as comfortable as an under that's why I ranked this behind Schultz and the matchup is going to be a lot easier for Gabe Davis, but the game trip is going to be a negative for him. If the Bills are indeed going to be up big, they're not going to throw the ball. The way that we saw what or how they game plan last week, this is not going to be good for the second half. So that's even something that you can look to for uh, the second half props if they do give us that on Thanksgiving for unders on receiving yards for the Bills if they are going to have a huge lead. Um, and yeah, Buffalo, they're they're the away team, but they're 9.5 favorites anyway. So, like, just you just hope that he doesn't do the damage early, and then we should be good. And then the fifth and final play is going to be from the same game. Jamal Williams, 10.5 under. If we look at, uh, well, we can look at fantasy score uh, against running backs first. So the Bills, they, are, they give up the 11th least, but... The attempts because that's something that um, is allowing um, Jamal Williams to get, score a lot of fantasy points. He's getting a lot of touches. DeAndre Swift's still hurt, and he is the leading rushing touchdown uh, guy. So for the Bills, because they're up pretty much the whole game, they don't allow a lot of attempts because teams are forced to throw, and they allow these seven the least rush attempts. But if they are going to be up big, the Bills, that's going to force the Lions to throw. And for Jamal Williams, a rushing touchdown leader he's a plus 120 for a touchdown anytime touchdown that includes receiving as well so that's really not the best odds for a running back getting that much of the work and also if uh or if they if they are indeed the lines are going to be down then they're going to throw the ball jamal williams is not really involved like he runs about 10 routes a game and that's including the games that they're trailing it goes to deandre swift and 
just Jamal Williams, if he can't get there rushing the ball, can't get a rushing touchdown, I think he's definitely going to go under on this one. So kind of a similar thing. If he doesn't get a touchdown early, he doesn't get in his points in the first half, this is going to go under. So that is going to be the five plays. I feel pretty comfortable about Myers and then Stevenson. So those are the two go-tos if you need other picks. Right now it's going to be Schultz and Davis Williams. So that is going to be the core five for this week for Thanksgiving. Expect a video on Sun or on Saturday for the Sunday main slate. But happy Thanksgiving again, guys, and enjoy the time off with your family for the holidays. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.